here's what everyone wants to know. And that is, how do you buy your first property in Japan as a foreigner? What do you look for? How do you know if it's a good investment? And how do you negotiate a deal? In this video, I'm gonna share step-by-step -step how to buy your first house in Japan as a foreigner. My name is Shu. I run a company called PostFi. We help non-Japanese speakers purchase their first property in Japan by saving their time and money. So this video is for foreigners, both resident and non-resident alike, to find their dream second home or first rental property at an incredible price. And here's my promise to you. If you follow these steps, not only will you get your first property in Japan, but you will save time and a lot of money in the process. Before we begin, I have a quick announcement. If you want to get off to a great start to the new year by achieving a big goal, be sure to sign up for my free in-depth live training sessions on how to buy your first house in Japan in just 90 days. And I'm hosting them in the first week of January 2024. There are limited seats available, so be sure to reserve your spot today. Link in the description. All right, let's get started with the video. Why Japan? There are three main reasons why investing in Japan makes sense today. First, Japanese real estate is, as a whole, a lot more affordable than the other developed countries. As I explained in this video, there is a global housing crisis where home affordability is at a historic low in many countries, including the US and Australia. The interest rates are high and home prices keep rising, making it difficult for many people to afford a home. On the other hand, Japanese real estate hasn't experienced that kind of inflation these countries have. After the bubble burst in the early 90s, the country has gone through three decades of stagnation called the lost decades. Japanese homes also have a shorter lifespan. At least that's how the Japanese like to believe. Homes in Japan depreciate in 20 to 30 years. So the structure of your property will literally be worthless in 30 years or so. It's the land that tends to hold value. And this is why most people in Japan have a strong preference for newly built properties. In other words, the Japanese don't value used homes, even if they're in decent condition. For an American or Australian buyer, a 30-year-old house might sound kind of new and probably would have no problem buying a used home. But for a typical Japanese buyer, that's considered old and they would rather demolish it and build a new one. This is why you find cheap used homes all over Japan. The second reason is the weak currency. The Japanese yen almost hit its 33-year low against the USD earlier this month, making it favorable for foreign buyers who are earning in stronger currencies to get into the Japanese real estate market. The third reason is the low interest rates. And this applies to those who can qualify for loans in Japan. So in general, if you don't live in Japan, it's very, very difficult to get a mortgage through a Japan-based bank. Anyway, you have access to some of the world's lowest interest rates. If you're buying a primary home, you're looking at somewhere around 1%. For investment properties, it's between 1% and 2%. Money is cheap in Japan right now. Sure, real wealth is built by owning something valuable, and Japanese real estate as a whole isn't known for long-term appreciation. But I want you to tell me one housing market in the developed countries where you can find cash flowing deals as easily as in Japan today. I didn't think so. Cash flow is king because you can weather tough financial times when you have cash flow coming in from your business. I lost my six figure salary job in 2022, but didn't have to get a job right away because I had cash flow from my rental portfolio coming in. I ended up taking time off, switching my career and starting a business. Capital gains might build your wealth much faster, but it doesn't necessarily give you financial freedom cash flow does. So if you're stuck in a job you hate and want to build a steady income from real estate investing, I think Japan is a great market. Of course, not in every part of the country, but in general. If you're looking to spend more time or retire in the countryside of Japan, you can get a very nice Japanese style house on the cheap as well. Buying property in Japan as a foreigner. So before I get into the how part of buying a house in Japan, let me answer some of the most commonly asked questions. Is it possible to buy real estate in Japan as a foreigner? The answer is yes. Contrary to popular belief, Japan allows anyone, regardless of nationality, residency status, or visa type, to buy both real estate and land in the country. So in fact, we've helped a number of overseas investors purchase their first house in Japan without them living in the country. And there are no extra taxes on the Japanese side when the foreign national buys property in Japan. In fact, foreigners have the exact same buying and ownership privileges as Japanese investors and are subject to the same rules on inheritance and taxation. Okay, a few more things you must know as a foreigner in Japan. Number one, buying real estate in Japan will not give you residency here. There is no real estate investor visa available as in other countries. But don't worry, there are many ways to get a long-term visa in Japan. Number two, 
In general, Japanese real estate prices do not appreciate. I briefly mentioned this earlier, but in many countries, people buy houses as an investment asset with the expectation that they will appreciate in value over time. One major difference between the Japanese housing market and those of other countries is that the value of houses in Japan on the whole tends to depreciate with time. And that is even truer outside of Japan's major cities. With that said, if you're looking for capital gains, Japan as a whole will probably not get you the kind of returns you want. Japanese real estate is good for cash flow. And number three, you will likely have to pay cash if you are not a resident of Japan. As I said earlier, as a non-resident or a temporary resident, you probably won't be able to get a loan from a Japan-based bank. So be sure to have cash ready in Japanese yen. A lot of our clients use apps like Wise or Revolut for a quick currency exchange. If you know when you want to buy your property in Japan, you might want to take advantage of the weak exchange rate now and prepare yourself. According to a strategist at Morgan Stanley, the Japanese yen will probably make its way back to around 133 yen per USD by mid next year. Now that we went over some of the most commonly asked questions, let's go over another critical point, how you will buy real estate in Japan. There are mainly two ways. You either buy it under your own name or through an entity like an LLC. Very straightforward, but let me tell you why this is very important. It's going to impact the timeline and the initial cost of your purchase. I talked about this topic extensively in this video. So if you want to know more about the pros and cons of buying through an entity and how to go about it, be sure to watch it after this video. In short, if you're buying a vacation home for you to stay, you won't need to form an entity. You can just buy under your name. But if you're planning to build a rental portfolio, you would probably want to form an entity like a GK, which is the American equivalent of an LLC. After figuring out how you're going to buy the property, let's talk about how to search for a deal. There are several ways to find your next deal through online sites, city auctions, IKEA banks, and real estate agents. There are pros and cons to each of these, but if you are starting from scratch, using online sites is a great first step to finding your first or next deal. In Japan, there are plenty of good deals online. You just need to know what a good deal looks like and take action right away. How to read a property listing. When I look for property listings, I usually use these three websites at home, sumo, and homes. And thanks to today's technology, you don't have to be able to read Japanese. You can just get these sites translated in web browsers like Chrome using inbuilt translation functions. Thank you, Google. Here, let me share some relevant Japanese terms you're likely to come across in real estate. Kudosan is the word for real estate. Kudosanya is a real estate agent or firm. And property is bukken. Kendisho is property title or deed. Chintai is rent. Kariru is to rent, so you can ignore these terms since we're talking about buying properties here. Kau or kounyu suru, to buy is what you're after. When it comes to the types of property, you are likely to see mansion or apato to indicate apartments. Tochi, land, and ikkodate or ikkenya, houses. Reform or reform and renovation mean renovations on the property, but if you see sumi on the end, it means they have been done recently. And mikaiso means none have been done with the implication that it needs doing. There are two indicators for the interior floor plan and size. One is the number, which indicates the number of bedrooms plus the acronym for LDK, living, dining, and kitchen. For example, two LDK refers to two bedrooms and living slash dining room with a kitchen. The other is the size of the rooms in tatami mats. It doesn't matter if the rooms are washitsu, Japanese style tatami mat rooms, or yoshitsu, western style rooms in Japan. We still use the tatami mat as a unit of measurement rather than square meters. Genkan, the front entrance hall, where you take your shoes off before stepping into the house, which is on the raised level regardless of whether it is an apartment or a house. Oshire or shuno for closet or storage space. Balcony, terrace. Niwa is garden. So now you know how to search for and read listings. Let's move on to how to analyze them. This is probably the hardest part when buying a property. Whether you're looking to buy a house for you to live in or a rental property, Property, you'll need to put in a lot of reps to know what a good deal is. Here are the main things I look at when analyzing a deal. First thing you want to look at is the current condition of the house, the year build. Also, if there has been any renovations to the property. Needless to say, 
market. The newer and better condition of the property, the more valuable it is. Next, you want to look at the house size and land size. Nowadays, people are getting married later and having fewer kids, so the average size of a household is getting smaller. As a rental property, you want to have something like a 2LDK or 3K. As for the house size, you want to have something that's around 50 to 80 square meters. It might feel very small for some of you, but this is pretty average in Japan. And this is as a rental property. Next, you want to look at the location. Most people prefer living relatively close to a train station in Japan because that's the main form of transportation in Japan. A distance of 15 minutes or less is great for walking, but it's also going to cost you more the closer you get. But also, it'll be easier to rent out. I live more than 30 minutes away from the nearest station, but I usually bike there, so it takes me about 10 minutes. For a rental property, I would max out at 30 minutes because you can get a bigger house in a quieter neighborhood, but still can't get to the train station station in 10 minutes by bike. And finally, potential rent. In Japan, there is no website like rentometer.com where you can find out the comparable rents in a particular area. So you need to figure this out manually. This is when you go to the chintai or rent section of the online sites and start looking how much the similar properties in the area you're looking at are being rented for. For example, if you buy a house for 10 million yen and rent it out for 100,000 yen per month, then that would be the classic 1% rule. 100K divided by 10 million million is 1%. I usually aim for something that's 1% or better. Since you'll likely be buying all cash, there's no mortgage payment. So a lot of the 100,000 yen will be your cash flow. Now that you know how to analyze the property, let's move on to making an offer. The best part about making a cash offer is that you tend to have more negotiating power than the buyer who is using leverage. Basically, you're the only decision maker, so things can move very quickly when you make a cash offer. Making the right offer is knowing your numbers, the asking price plus the potential renovation cost versus the potential rent. And then ask yourself, is the asking price fair? If not, how much does it need to come down? Before making an offer, always have a backup number in your back pocket. The chances are when you make an offer that's lower than the asking price, the seller will not take the offer as is. If they're interested, they will most likely counter offer. So you need to prepare for the counter offer with a backup number. It's a number that you're not willing to go above and beyond. For example, you're interested in buying this property and the asking price is 15 million yen. After analyzing the deal, you think the fair price is actually 13 million yen, but you can also make it work at 13.8 million yen. If the seller comes back to you at 13.5 million, you should take it. But if they come back at 14 million yen, you have an option to walk away, make another counter offer at 13.8 million, or take the counter offer. It all depends on how badly you want it. But for this example, 200,000 yen is really not that much to fuss about. So you might as well take it, especially if you think it's a good property. But if you have other good options, you can be more aggressive with your negotiation. I used to hate negotiating, but once I realized that pretty much everything we do in life is negotiation, I made a commitment to be good at it. It's a skill and you can learn it. In real estate transactions, it comes with time, experience, and understanding all the other people involved. It's about knowing the property condition, the property interest by other potential buyers, property listing date, and how badly the seller wants to sell it. The last piece is by far the most important, but you can only find out about it if you make an effort to get to know the seller and the agent. Good negotiators can put different pieces of information together quickly and assess the true intention of the seller. The best type of seller to negotiate with is when they don't know the true value of the property and set the asking price much lower than what it's worth. But with time, they will find out they put the price too low because there will be other potential buyers reaching out to them. If you have the opportunity to make an offer, do it right away. When you spend enough time looking at listings, you'll soon realize that good deals will be sold very quickly. This is why you need to get as much practice in so that you'll know when a good deal comes up and take action right away. Congratulations, you got your offer accepted by the seller. Now what? If the seller accepts your offer, then you have to fill out an initial contract form and prepare a 10% deposit in cash as earnings money. It'll be deducted from the final price on final contract day. Once the initial contract is signed, you and the seller decide on the date to finalize the sale. This can be as quick 
as two weeks from the initial contract date, or it can take as long as months. It usually takes about a month or so. Between initial contract and final contract days, the seller will send you the breakdown of the cost, including the title fees, judicial scrivener fee, stamp duty, broker commissions, and the taxes. In the final contract day, or the closing table, you will need to bring your ID, your registration proof of address, or Juminkyo if you live in Japan, or the original copy of the notarized affidavit to show your residence outside of Japan. And you're expected to make the final payment on that day. Most of the times, this is done by bank transfer. You just want to make sure that you have all the Japanese yen you need and the method to transfer it to the designated bank account. If you take all of these steps, it's very reasonable for you to buy your first or next property in Japan within 90 days. Recently, we helped the client buy their first property in Japan in less than 30 days. Well, it'll probably be closer to 60 days, but, but we helped them complete the initial contract within 30 days of us working together. So 90 days is very doable, especially if you're not forming an entity in Japan to buy your next deal. Imagine owning a property in Japan three months from now. How would that make you feel? Home ownership in the country you love is very exciting because it'll give you a sense of happiness and fulfillment if it's your dream house or a new stream of passive income from your first rental property. If you got value from this video, you're gonna love the free live training sessions I'm hosting in the first week of January 2024. We're gonna dive even deeper into this topic to get your new year started with a clear vision and strategy for your journey into home ownership in Japan. There are limited spots available, so be sure to save your seat by registering today. Link is below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and watch this video next for more. See you in the next one.